Hello everybody and welcome to the 8th Python with Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn for investing as an example tutorial video. In this video we're going to be building on the last video and we will be uh, basically incorporating a change, right? So here we're going to do percent change between uh, the stock's price and the S&P 500 and this is kind of how we'll normalize these two. Um, so we want to know like percentage change in relation to the S&P 500 and who, you know, we can use that to kind of decide who's the more superior um, investment, right? Do we invest in the you know, S&P 500 index or should we pick that stock or, or not? Um, so anyway, that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, so we're going to add two new things here. So after price, we're going to do um, comma and we can do stock underscore p underscore change and then after s p 500 we can do um let me tap this down a little bit so stock p change and then after s p 500 we can run uh s p 500 underscore p underscore change for percentage change okay so we've got that, and um, in fact, we'll do the same thing that we did before. So we're gonna just, after every comma, let's just um, return here. Since this line is obviously quite long. There, so this is a little better. So that's all of our uh, you know, columns, basically. And also, later on, especially if your data set was like massive, uh, you probably would not be uh, incorporating price anymore. Like you would get this out of your CSV later on. Like imagine if we had like m like a million rows, let's say. We could effectively get rid of either date or Unix. Um, in theory, we could get rid of ticker even. Uh, so that's like, you know, 1 million, 2 million. Um, keep DE ratio probably. Um, and then get rid of price in SP 500. So 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, let's say, row or you know data points we could get rid of to make the, the file size significantly smaller. Anyway, moving on. Um, so we've added those things. Uh, now we want to actually get to calculating them. And it's a little more difficult here because basically you need to calculate percent change every time you have a new stock, right? So to do that, we basically for each dir, so each time basically we change stocks, what do we need to do? Well, um, let's see, ticker. First of all, I've been meaning to, uh, we need a ticker list that we'll probably use down the road. So let's go ahead and add that really quick. So we're gonna say ticker underscore list, and that just equals an empty list. And then right after ticker, we do ticker underscore list dot append ticker. Um, we won't be using that right away, but uh, we will eventually get there. So now for each dir in stock list, what do we want to do? So we'll come down here and we're going to basically say starting stock value equals false and then starting underscore SP 500 underscore value equals false. This basically just means for every time we hit a new directory, which means every time we hit a new uh, ticker, we don't have a starting point, right? So we can't do a percentage change. Um, on you know no starting point basically so we need to set a new starting point um, and we can't use obviously previous stocks right so that would be a huge problem so we want to do that now we basically come down to let's see for each line or for file in each file so each file uh, after stock price is where we can add our you know changes right so by stock price we've defined the stock price and we've defined the S&P 500 value at this point. So now we can calculate percentage change as well. Um, so what we're gonna say is stock P change and stock percentage change. Uh, percentage change is new minus the old divided by the old times 100. So to do that, we would say new minus the uh, old. So we would say stock underscore price new minus the old, which would be, um, starting stock value so new minus the old um hold on let me think here because actually so yeah we need to add, we need to add one more one more line here so right above uh what we're doing here uh keep this line in mind uh but we need to have a quick if statement to handle this false value i was like doing the math in my head and i was like wait you can't do that with false anyways uh so if not 
starting stock value. So basically, if false, right? So if this rings false, so if that's the case, we need to set the starting value. So we would just say starting underscore stock underscore value equals stock stock price like that. And we need to do the same thing for the S&P 500. So copy this, enter, paste, uh, starting SP500 value, replace this with SP500 equals, and then copy that SP500 value right there, paste, boom, done. Now, back to our percentage change. Stock P change equals stock price minus starting stock value, so new minus the old. Then we, of course, do divide by the old, so starting stock value. And then we multiply all of this by 100. So uh, multiply by 100, easy enough. Now we're gonna copy this line, copy, come down here, paste, and replace stock with SP500. Uh, and again, stock with SP500, starting SP500 value, and then divided by SP500 value. One quick look over, make sure we did that all right. SP500, okay. So new minus the old divided by the old times 100 looks good. So now we've run um, basically all that data. So the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we'll come on down to here where we're defining our new data that we just called up here. So we've got price and then stock P change. So I'm just going to copy that so I remember what I called it. Come on down. So we've got price. Then we had uh, stock P change. That equals, well, that equals stock P change. Then we had the S&P 500, comma. And then we had uh, SP 500 P change. We'll change that in just a second. And then SP 500 P change. So SP 500 there and SP 500 there. All is well, or it appears to be. So let's go ahead and run that. Save and run. Invalid syntax, sum aware. Uh, we forgot a comma here. I was like, that looks legit. <laughs> uh, okay, try that one more time. It says it's done. So let's open this bad boy right on up. We got nothing. So it sounds like we're hitting an exception, sum aware. Of. So instead of uh, passing on the exception, let's print the string E. Value. Just trying to see if I see the problem. I do not. Maybe it's in one of these though. Let me uh, check that real quick. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's run in real quick and see what the error is. Oh, we probably should have had a sleeper. Um, okay, SP500 price is not being defined. Uh, okay, so it needs to be SP500 value. And where are we calling SP500 price? Okay, right here. So SP500, whoops, it needs to be SP500 value. Let me uh, copy this, paste. So new minus the old. Okay, so let's get rid of that exception again. Um, Cause in theory, we probably hit a few, especially on like not available uh, DE ratios. So I'd rather skip those if I can. Okay, this looks a little more successful. <laughs> so here we go. We have a list of basically a bunch of stocks, you know, the first 25. Um, so we're running through. I'm not really sure that adds up to 25. Hmm. Anyway, um, that's almost certainly because of the a problem we'll see later on. I'm going to visualize that problem for us instead of uh, dealing with it now. Um, so we'll get there. But anyways, you can see that at least for some of these stocks, this is indeed working. We've got, um, you know, percentage change obviously starts at zero and then we've got, you know, minus 13. This is minus 0 0.4. Obviously a was not a good company to invest in right away. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So we're off to a good start there. Um, and so now we're kind of comparing them, but now we want to, so we've got percentage change on both of those columns. And now finally, we need to compare the percentage change. So you compare the percentage change, and when we compare them, we can just basically subtract them from each other. So we could say, you know, um, if percentage change is, say, a positive number, 
Um, so percent change from like we, what we would do is like say uh, stock P change minus SP 500 P change. And if that is a say positive number, that means good that that company was it outperformed the market. So that was a buy. And if it's negative, then it did not outperform the market. Therefore, it's not a sale. Uh, or I mean, it's not a buy. Therefore, it is a sell and we should not be invested in that company. So now we can add every step of the way, we can label that company as having been a buy or a sell. And, and really the, the, the determinant is actually the previous value. So the previous debt to equity value is what we would be most focused on or most interested in um, given that current value. So we look at the previous one and say, okay, well at that point it was not a buy or sell. Um, so anyways, uh, we will be getting to that. Uh, probably, yeah, we'll do that in the next video for sure. Um, so anyways, if you have any questions or comments on this video, maybe I didn't explain something correctly, I maybe left something out or did some math wrong, uh, please feel free to let me know. Please don't argue with me on percentage change. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and the donations. And until next time.